bit more. Yeah. You all hear me? Hey. Uh, I I cannot believe we're on time. <laughs> Everything works. Best thing that's going to happen to me all year. Oh, thank you. My uh my hair does what it wants and I my best uh just make that something I can live. How is everybody? Give a few or I start actually signing, give everybody a chance to hop in. Um, way that I think today, yesterday I did my very, very best to sign live, but um, day two, and I don't know if uh, we're gonna go. I'm learning as I go on this. It was cut. Huh? that any better still kind of we were so close to no tech glitches had to plug everything back in <laughs> um i actually love this little thing it's the uh will be got this adjustable uh, and pop filter shaped like a honeycomb. Cut now. They're a bumble. And I'm going to buy it.
All right, how about now? How's that going? I was so, so confident. <laughs> so confident that there would be no issues. Hey. Yay! Okay, cool. I cut out a middleman. I uh, I was using a an add-on to help with noise suppression, and it suppressed everything. <laughs> Thanks so much. I'm having some coffee. Too. This is um. I don't want to tell you how many cups this is for just this morning, but. Uh, I made myself a little uh, vanilla latte at home. Fancy. Um, last night, uh, I had an unexpected little bit of fun. Uh, we were talking a little bit in the stream yesterday about uh, the Dungeon Booth, which was a D&D &D, uh, podcast that I did season one and a live game of uh with chris waycamp who's aizawa in pro as our dm um game one was also jill harris and kyle phillips and uh then we did the live game with uh me kyle and mallory rodak and uh chris waycamp's stream played the live game last night so i uh popped by and chatted with them and watched it for the first time in two years it's still one of the most fun experiences of my life. So uh, we played the game live on stage at Game Fest 19. Uh, and there was a live audience. Our uh, amazing engineer, editor, creative tour de force, um, Aaron from Aaron Does Audio. He's here. He does all sorts of fun stuff. Um... No, Mallory was in uh, game two with uh, Tia and Steven Sanders and somebody else, maybe? I'm thinking game three. Um, but uh, we did it live on stage, and Aaron had all of these live audio cues for the whole thing, so he had done a special... Um, melody for any time my bard cast a spell we had arrow noises there were goblins and we had never heard any of it so it was like this live immersive experience that was so cool um just really really uh neat and i hope we get to do more of it now that things are back up I know, uh, to Matthew just saying he could have sworn Mallory was with us. It, she, like, I, I loved playing with Jill too, and her character Erica, really fun. But there, every now and again, you get, um, characters that just really gel with each other. And our three, uh, Limerick, Thok, and Agatha, just were meant to be a party. Uh, I couldn't believe, I thought for sure we would have a little bit of, um, you know, that, that sort of, uh, awkward getting to know you phase. Um, and we did play a practice game just to get a sense of everyone's play style, refresh us all on the rules. Um, but even in the practice game, we all just got each other. Uh, these characters just really knew what they were about. And so it was really interesting, uh, how seamless it all sort of blended in. Another thing that I knew was true, but didn't, I thought maybe my memory had exaggerated, was how often we critical miss in this podcast group. <laughs> it's too much. It's statistically improbable how often we completely whiff, or as we like to call it, uh, thock it up after Kyle's game.
the misses are the funniest part. They um it happened in game one as well, and it's sort of historically true for me. Um uh dice hate me. I've I've never rolled well consistently. Um but they will come through in a pinch. So I don't want to spoil anything. Um the the podcast is available. Listen to the live games available to watch and it's super super worth it. Uh you can find them on YouTube, on the Dungeon Booth website. I'm selling you guys stuff already this morning. <laughs> Do my razzle dazzle. Um I believe it's also on iTunes and Stitcher, I know for sure. I'm not sure about Spotify. But uh, they're really great to sort of have on uh, in the background. And everybody who is a player is also a voice actor from your favorite show. Um, but the amount of times that the critical miss when we really want to hit and critical hit when it is so necessary or when it's uh, like well you do something really cool but it doesn't save anyone's life um oh thank you so much matt that uh, matt put a link up in the chat um i appreciate you all being here so much uh kind of like yesterday we're just chatting signing it's gonna be very relaxed very chill um so if you have any question uh anything that you'd love to know about uh about voiceover about acting um about uh tabletop rpgs if you guys just want to talk about stuff that you love that's what i'm here for um i uh i love uh disney i love the parks uh i like cute and spooky things uh like video games so anything that it is on your heart to to talk about or ask about, we're here to just uh, chat and have a good time. Um, again, I appreciate, I know it's early on a Sunday, um, so I really appreciate it. And uh, if you would like to buy a print to have signed, it's not too late, uh, you can follow the link that's there. I'm sure there's a fancy way to make that clickable, but the fact that that you can hear and see me is a miracle unto it. Um, so yeah, you can go to streamily.com slash Felicia Angel or uh, streamily.com slash Genshin Impact. Uh, there are tons of members of the cast uh, that are doing signings and the Genshin Impact. Matt, you are the best. Uh, I just saw the link go up in the chat. Yes. Um, there are tons of other people doing signings today. Uh, through various platforms, this was just the one I was most confident I could use, and I think that's gonna be funny for me. Oh, microphone. Um. Did speaking Inte Eastland in Devil is a Part Timer help me prepare for speaking for Bonnie in Copcraft? That's a great question, and yes, although. Um, what I credit the most with ease of the Farbani language, which I'm really glad it sounded, uh, effortless, um, not to, to my own horn here, but it was a comment that I got fairly often was that, uh, the language sounded real. Um, I actually credit with being a big nerd. Um, I grew up listening to, uh, the three tenors and Pavarotti and Andrea Bocelli and a lot of Josh Groban um, and his early stuff. Uh, he, some of the newer albums are uh, a lot of like uh, English language covers, but many of the old ones were foreign language covers, uh, classic songs. And so I was singing along in languages I don't understand phonetically and also uh, anime opening theme. So, uh, just trying to lead with confidence, I think, is the biggest part of any accent or language challenge. Do as much research as you can. Try to get it right. But once you start doing it, don't think so hard about it. Because in our mother tongues, we don't. We don't really focus on 
your uh, your accent, your syntax, to speak. So we just kind of try to go with it. Um, and Jeremy Inman, who was our director for Copcraft, uh, we spent a long time in episode one establishing uh, the phonetics. We had the language, and we uh, so we knew what it looked like. We wanted to make sure we knew what it sounded like and he let me uh, as he calls it put some cajun on it so you'll hear certain inflections that um are a throwback to growing up in southwest um and have kind of the cage of cage uh which makes me so so happy any time i can that part of my life uh into the mainstream in a way that isn't uh really brings Ooh, what kind of characters have I played in D and D? Um I should also sign a thing because I'm just gonna talk to you guys if I don't. Um, so we're going to start with our Streamily family members, and I'm going to call out to you again, summon from the ether, <laughs> uh, like a medium, uh, to see if you're here. And if not, I will be signing anyway, just to help us move through, um, and to help you more easily find it in the video. I saw some of the other people's signings and they have made it so easy. So I apologize. And I scrolling through the video for your signing. Um, so we're going to start with this gorgeous Mona Magistus for Zeller. Azir, welcome back to the chat. Given just a moment in case Zeller is here. Uh, and while I wait, I will answer the question. So for me, um, I play a lot of bards. Uh, I don't think that's surprising to anyone, but, um, outside of class types, I, I'm really drawn to some characters. Um, so a lot of them are idealistic and at the start of their journey. Um, so I like to play that part of the hero's journey, the, the setting out on the quest. Um, right now, uh, I've got Limerick, the half-elf bard, who is my least good character. Uh, she is chaotic neutral, which is weird for me. Um, and she is very much a challenge to me. You, you'll hear it, uh, if you listen to the Dungeon Booth podcast or you watch the live game, you'll hear me and Limerick have conflicts <laughs> within the game um, because there are very many times where if it were Felicia in the chat, in the chat, <laughs> I was looking at the chat. Welcome to Sunday. Um, uh, if it were Felicia in the game, I would do uh, something for the party. I would do whatever was the most right. Um, Limerick, on the other hand, will do whatever has the highest chance of her own personal survival. Uh, survival first, personal gain second. Um, other people living third, unless it's someone who uh, she bonded with Thok almost immediately because he's very strong. Like, if I can keep him alive, he can keep me alive. Uh, so it has to be mutually beneficial. Um, I also am obsessed with this D&D &D expansion called Humblewood. Uh, it's got very... Um, I know the... Why, Brain? Brian Jacques. They're mice with swords. Redwall. Had to reverse engineer that one. Um, very that feel. Uh, you can play as birds. You can play as... Thank you, Matt. <laughs> My brain's just lagging. Um, you can play as uh, Jerboas. They call them Jerboas. You can play as a Mopak, uh, which 
Jack. Uh, so adorable. Um, and I got inspired by their uh, night owl design. Um, I believe they call him Riffin. But I got really inspired by him and created a character named uh, Pinion. Uh, and he is 14 and a half. And he's out on his first journey. And he is... The uh, son of a knight, uh, he's got nine brothers and they're all going to be knights and he just wants to do the right thing. But he's learning that the right thing and what makes him feel heroic aren't always necessary. And I love him to absolute peace. Uh, he is a very, very good boy. Um, and then I'm also playing a tabaxi fighter named Cricket, who, if she were smart, might be evil, but she's um, she's not really smart enough to know that some of the things she does uh, are coming from a moral gray area. <laughs> she's very easily distracted. I love her to pee. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna for real. I'm gonna sign. For Zeller! Alright. First paint pen of the day. On the back of this Perona! That is here. She has a little factory defect. So we're Zeller, thank you so much for your order. Thank you also for listening to me talk about all of my D&D &D characters uh, before I signed. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. Ooh, I may get a Tilarna print. It's it's a tough thing because um I love to collaborate with the artists. I love to have prints. But also um there have been characters that I loved that I commissioned and printed and traveled with heavy prints for <laughs> and no but they don't nobody wants them and it makes me so sad so i try to uh pick wisely but i may do like a limited run of tilarna um because i love her i loved that whole show um if you are over the age of 18 uh mostly for violence and language uh check out copcraft it's a labor of love it's uh kind of it's inspired by 80s buddy cop movies and uh, I play a sassy alien uh, royal named uh, Tilarna Exedelica. And uh, David Matranga, who you guys might know as Todoroki, plays her grizzled cop buddy, um, K. Mott. And we speak an entirely made up alien language uh, several times. And we even had to, there's an episode with an ancient. Being who has to speak a different dialect because it's the old alien. Uh, and I loved it tremendously. Hey, Supreme, welcome back. Day is going well. We've signed a whole print. We are moving today. <laughs> Oh, I love that uh, Matt's sharing that in D&D, &D, has set a forest on fire to break out of hypnosis. <laughs> we're also, we're just chatting. We're talking a lot about D&D this morning. Um, but yeah, I, the, the first character I ever played was myself as a fairy. I started playing um, my sophomore year of high school. I had a friend 
ran several games and uh this is a big deep cut oh hey oni welcome um thank you for joining Um, but I had a friend who was a really creative DM and liked to bring whatever we were into, into the game. So, uh, at one point I played the worst bard I've ever played. Uh, it, she was a Saiyan named Ariana and she was technically a bard, but she had like a negative 10 charisma modifier. It was a bad time for everyone. She almost got us killed a lot. Um, she thought she was diplomatic and nobody else did, but, um, I got to do Walla for, even it was, it had to have been the Broly movie, uh, for timeline sake. And I got to just call out, I was, uh, talking with Stephen Hoff and I was like, I am going to be this female Saiyan and her name is Ariana now. And she's my OC from when I was 15. And this, you have to let me have this dream. So it's not their can, it's me. <laughs> Abel, yes, I uh I have yours here in the stack and I'm glad that uh that's what we'll say is that I was giving everyone a chance to get here. <laughs> Oh, we must be getting really popular, you guys. The bots are back very early. All right, print number two, Galatea. Are you here with us, Galatea? Make your presence known. Galatea would like a moment quote. And we talked about it a little bit yesterday. One of my favorites is um, one of her uh, ability attack callouts. Uh, Delve into destiny because of uh, the way it feels to say that with the Atlantic. The delve into destiny. Uh, incredibly fun. Thank you so much, Galatea. <laughs> Jake and Brittany. Jake? Guys, anybody wasn't here yesterday. This is the uh the holographic print that I have. Uh this all day. And this one was drawn uh by Kristen McGuire. Uh is insanely talented and she plays uh my character Kokaku's Ruri in Doctor Stone right now, and I love her. absolutely. All right, Jake and Brittany, thank you so much. And my favorite li voice line. I'm actually, you're going to be written in the star. I don't want everybody to have. Thank you so much, Jake and Brittany. Shot it. These are all things that I learned, by the way, watching other people's streams. Um, so next time, I'm going to be a pro at this. And I appreciate all of your patience.
another sparkly shiny for Sarah. Sarah, if you we just tripled our productivity, so we deserve a break. <laughs> you again. Post Let me know if it keeps up. It might be that I am moving too far back and forth away. I've got it hardwired. Thank you, JC. And thank you, Pikachu. Welcome. Welcome to the chat. And uh, thank you for being here with us today and for the compliment. All right, you guys let me know if it if it continues to cut in and out. I will do some riveting live tech. All right, Sarah, this one is for you. Thank you so much. Um, we learned yesterday that if I sign right mirrored, if I sign right here, it makes it look like Mona's looking up at the signature on the hat, and that tickles me, so. Oh cool, thanks, JC. Shayna. Got the big, the big mamma jam. I love these. They came out so beautiful. This is uh, Alina on Twitter and Instagram. And Shayna would like, written in the stars. I have to swing back for the screenshot. It's mirrored. Uh, Shayna, you uh, got the best handwriting of my life. We won up to yesterday. I don't know who wrote this, but it's not, it doesn't look like me. Uh, and you can actually read it. So you were, you were truly blessed this day. Oh, Pikachu would like to know my favorite character's voice. Um... I am really terrible at questions about favorites because it's almost always the one that I'm doing right now or have just done. So, um, the ones that we are, uh, talking about today are some of my favorites. So, uh, we talked about Tilarna from Copcraft, uh, who I love tremendously, she got to be sassy and this righteously driven paladin, and she got to have a ton of growth. Um, and also, it, it the show is hilarious, and uh, working off of David Matranga is a joy. Uh, he is so tremendously talented, and um, it's rare... Because we record separately, it's hard to cultivate uh, chemistry between actors. And there is something, uh, we've played off of each other in a few shows, uh, and there is just something that clicks in our performances. And I am always just blown away by it that uh, regardless of who records first, we're always able to sort of anticipate where the other is going to go with the scene 
And so when you get the whole thing together, it has this sort of seamless quality to it, which is what we all strive for. It's what our directors are there for. And I think the end product ends up like that a lot of times, but it's not always as uh, as easy, as organic as it is when I get to play off of uh, is amazing. And uh, Emily Neves was our writer for that, and I, I love the way that she writes. So, yay. Um, a few others that are uh, less popular, but uh, there was a show back in 2015 called The Rolling Girls, and I play uh, Nozomi Moritomo, and the whole thing is like a like slice of life road trip meets kill the kill meets sailor moon plus aliens uh it's by studio wit it's beautiful it's family friendly highly recommend hello 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 so glad you could join us Oh, I didn't know that. That's a fun fact about Copcraft is that it is the first time that uh, our English writers kept the the alien language uh, exactly the same as the Japanese. I'm willing to bet that it's because it was established as a language rather than as a codex. Um, so, like, e each word is a word, if that makes sense, instead of it being... Uh, a rearranging of, uh, like, alphanumeric characters. All right. One sec. Don't match. I will figure it out here in a second. Ah, I see what I did. <laughs> thank you guys for, I'm, I'm gonna thank you for your patience over and over and over as I um, realize where I have aired. All right. So for Ray, we have another sparkly. Tell Kristen how much you all liked. The Thank you very much, Ray! We have got another beautiful Mona in her winter outfit that Kristen invented. And this one is for Alexi. Alexi would like, this is destiny. Thank you so much, Alexi. Mm. All right, Abel, if you are still in the chat, it is you. 
Uh, if anybody is just joining us, uh, we are doing signings uh, until we aren't. <laughs> um, you can still purchase prints at streamily.com slash Felicia Angel or streamily.com slash Genshin Impact. Uh, I have a bunch of not Genshin Impact stuff up in my store, but um, the event this weekend, and I believe it's going to move on into next week uh, as well, uh, is a bunch of the Genshin Impact cast. Hey, Abel! All right, Abel, you got Miku! Uh, this is from Quintessential Quintup, and uh, I play the best one. <laughs> oh, that's so loud. Sorry, guys. That's, um, my laugh is actually the uh, audio test for a lot of the stuff that we do to see if our levels are going to be too loud because I cackle like a sea witch. And I like to add a little, little music note for this. And Abel, you have requested any quote. Um, so if you don't mind, my favorite uh, is Miku yelling, I love Sengoku era warlords! Unless that's too much for your print, that's what I'm going to write. <laughs> All right, I'm taking that as no objection. Okay, cool. <laughs> there you go, Abel. Thank you so much for hanging out uh, yesterday and today. I appreciate you very, very much. All right, and then that completes our uh, Streamly family prints. So we're going to move on along. You just... Oh, I forgot I still have these over here from yesterday. We were talking about the dungeon booth. And I actually have some prints from our live game. So uh, we've got Limerick, who I played, Thok, uh, who Kyle Phillips played, and Agatha, who uh, was played by Mallory Rodak. And uh, you heard Felicia. Ta -da! Uh, some of the most fun I've ever had at a convention. She's asking if I play any games. I do. Um, I really like uh, like charming platformers. Uh, I've played a ton of uh, Hollow Knight recently. Um, also just played uh, Tangle Tower, which was really fun. It's a mystery puzzle solving game. Um, I like I like the RPGs. Big Kingdom Hearts fan. Um, so yeah, uh, recently played the the newest Paper Mario. Uh, I played a lot of Animal Crossing at the beginning of the pandemic last year. That really came through for all of us. What is my dream VO role, man? Honestly, um, it it's one of those things that there are characters that I'd love to play, but there are uh, many of them are already established. Um, I would love to be in the King of Fighters franchise. I, I, I was, the last Halloween I could dress up for, I was Terry Bogard. Um, so I would love to be part of that. It's been a big part of my life. Um, I do have a, a secret dream to voice every Felicia 
in a game, so I'd like to play Black Cat. I'd like to play Felicia from Darkstalkers, just because I think it's funny. Um, but uh, for me, when it comes to sort of the dream career, I just want to work. I want to work consistently on uh, properties that are creatively fulfilling. I'm a big fan of uh, edutainment, so if I could ever be a Ms. Frizzle type, that would make my life. Um, but yeah, I just, I, I love what I do and I want to do it, and that's, that's the dream career is to, that the phone keeps ringing. I haven't played Thousand Year Door. I've heard it is incredible, though. Elvin! Then we've got a beautiful Mona Magista for you. Caffeinate real quick. Oh, and this is just an, an FYI, uh, little technical housekeeping. Uh, it looks like, um, the stream from yesterday and probably this one didn't end up in the Twitch video on demand, but I have recordings of them and I will be putting them up on YouTube if you want to screen cap your signing or, um, screen video grab. Uh, so those will be up if you've, uh, if you know somebody who missed having their signed live, it is not. Uh, it's not gone forever. Elvin would like fate is upon you. Thank you so much, Elvin. Let's pose for the screenshot. <laughs> hmm. Uh. Welcome, Destrin. Sorry, I'm I'm leaning in today to to see the chat. Um. He would like to know, or they would like to know, uh, what it was like voicing Mary Sanderson in the Hocus Pocus the Brew shorts from a couple of years ago. Uh, it was incredible. Um, it, I love that movie. I know, I know I'm not alone. It is a huge hit. It's a, it's a classic. Um, it is one, I remember it, when it first came out. I borrowed the VHS from my friend Amber, and eventually, she was she was also my neighbor, eventually her mom had to come ask for it back, because I wouldn't give it back to her, because I loved it so much. Um, I eventually got my own copy, but it is uh, something that my sister and I watch every year. It was just... Um, in in the audition for it they encouraged improv as the characters and i have never been more prepared for anything in my whole life um and so i actually i auditioned for all three sisters um and i was surprised to get married because it's a difficult voice match um but it turns out that they weren't looking for a one-to-one -one, like exact voice match they were looking for the heart and that's one of the biggest compliments I have ever gotten, uh, is that I found the heart of this character that I loved. Um, I worked on that with Lila Burzens, who is also doing uh, the Genshin signing this week, um, and Laura Chris. And I learned so much from both of them. They're so incredibly talented. We got to do a callback together. We got to actually record it live together, uh, which is very rare for me doing mostly dubbing um even prelay is is trending more toward individual rather than group recordings um so it, it's an incredible experience yeah 
Yeah, JC, I do. I I figured it out too late that I had to adjust a, a setting in the Twitch. I have it set up. Um, I had a, a different account over the start of the pandemic for uh, Tia Ballard and I were sharing a channel called Alone Together, and I thought I had done all the same things on this channel, and I didn't. And uh, sorry. <laughs> Oh. Oni, it's you. We did it. We made it. <laughs> Oni, thank you so much. Uh, Oni is a friend of mine from Twitter, too, and you are just so supportive and so uplifting. I appreciate you so much. Um, I see in your notes that this is a birthday present to yourself, so happy birthday birthday and thank you so much for sharing a uh, part of the celebration here with us happy 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 birthday and I'll pause for your screenshot too, if you. <laughs> like, I'm just like, feels like the end of uh, every sitcom or like '80s movie where I like freeze frame. Just. Thank you uh, for telling Kristen that she did a good job on the Mona art. I bet she's going to love hearing that. It's catching up on the chat. My favorite color. Um, broadly, it's blue. Um, <laughs> I, I feel like you can kind of look at the background and tell. Uh, more specifically, I have been really into for the last couple of years this like mint uh, green, this sort of pastel teal that t trends a little bluer. Um, it's, it shows up a lot in my wardrobe. <laughs> All right. And is starting to disappoint me. We're gonna chat a little bit while I open this Sharpie. Where's my Happy birthday tomorrow! Ooh. Do you guys have anything like that in your lives where it's not exciting to anyone but you? Um, I just started a new paint pen and it came out so vibrant that I said, ooh, <laughs> oh yeah, office supplies. <laughs> this is for Adeline and you would like fate is upon you with a heart, which is strong. There you are, Adeline. Thank you so much. <laughs> New alphabet to decipher. You are so good at that. Um, it's. I think of you every time. There's a new, a new language somewhere. Um, we have a fun story about. Um, because sometimes. 
sometimes when you get in a show, um, there will be a made up language that makes no sense. That is just there to um, have symbols to show you that you are in a place that is foreign to you as the viewer and potentially to the characters. And it won't be consistent. Um, but we realized uh, we were doing uh, Puzzle and Dragons Cross. And I worked on that show for uh, 38 episodes, which is uh, 38 consecutive weeks. Uh, probably a little longer once you uh, consider holidays. So the show was my baby. And we started noticing that some of the symbols that they were using uh, for the uh, sort of dragon alphabet uh, were recurring. And so we started taking screenshots. My uh, my engineer, Austin, and I would screenshot them and uh, categorize them. And we started piecing it together. And it actually helped us to realize that there was a mistranslation of a character name later on in the show because we were calling him one thing and it's something that like it gets approved that way it's it's kind of a game of telephone and so it's not really anybody's fault um and it's easily fixed because it hadn't gone to dvd yet um but we realized that the way it had been translated and what we had been saying uh sounded similar but was not his actual name and the it was because during a tournament, his name went up on a big jumbotron with the dragon caller alphabet and spelled out something phonetically similar but different. Uh, and yes, ace detectives. We, we get so into this work. Yes, Sturgeon versus Star John. Um, and it's one of those things where, like, it... it you know, it all comes out in the wash, but we're working with um, our schedules and also trying to communicate back and forth with the license holder. So this isn't putting anybody on blast, but it was just such a fun, like, I don't know, it's that puzzle solving escape room satisfaction when you realize like, wait, we've got the pieces of the puzzle. We, we know that this isn't right and I can show you why because we've got a screen capped alphabet. That show, uh, it's another one that is family friendly, which I always love. Um, and the dub is a love letter to 90s and early 2000s dubs that I grew up on. So, um, yeah, very, very Pokemon, very Digimon. Uh, it's got uh, Alexis Tipton as an adorable egg mascot named Tomazo. And uh, he does like this uh speech affect for him that we still do to each other we'll see each other uh after however long and we go oh hey joe hey joe tama we talk about his nubbins and it's adorable and if you like adorable things you should go watch it. oh wong You've got a winter holographic for you. <laughs> Hong would like, come and get me, hag, from a <laughs> Mona's contemptuous relationship with her mentor, which I love. And this new paint pen is making my life. Thank you for that, Huang. Try to angle my ring light. Gonna wait a second for that paint to dry before we move on to the next one.
And we are moving today. It's because we got, we all got to know each other yesterday. <laughs> Focused. I'm more caffeinated. I was, uh, I'm over here checking my Streamily and I noticed I had a Twitter notification and it was, uh, Matthew got a great screen cap of me showing off the, uh, the dungeon booth print, so thank you for that. Um, is there anything else you guys want to know while we're just sitting here chatting? Um, I'm an open book. So, uh, if you are just joining us, we are... Signing for the Streamily Genshin Impact signing. Uh, I'm Felicia Angel. I'm the English voice of Mona from Genshin Impact. I also uh, voice Hagakure in My Hero Academia, Kohaku in Dr. Stone, Perona in One Piece. I'm sure there are more things. <laughs> um, I've also been an ADR voice director since 2015. I have worked on shows uh, either as a lead ADR director or assistant ADR director, uh, like Puzzle and Dragon's Cross, Grimgar of Fantasy and Ash, uh, Barakamon, uh, oh, we did, I got to work on a great arc of Boogie Pop and Others a couple years ago, um, and I was, uh, Mike McFarland's assistant director a number of years. He trained me and gave me a start. That's yeah, Oh, Supreme Kai of Time in Dragon Ball Xenoverse 1 and 2 and all of the DLC. Oh, what inspired you to get into voice acting? How old were you when you did your first gig? Um, so voiceover for me, um, it's something that I, I think was kind of always in mind. Um, I knew I wanted to be an actor uh, since I did a class play when I was 10. I showed up uh, to audition, showed up, it was in class. It was seriously to read a one act play out loud in class. I knew we were having auditions for it and I had my grandmother iron on an apple patch to a blue jean skirt and she put my hair up in a school marm bun and I read for it and I got it. Uh, and pretty much the first time people ever applauded, I was hooked. Um, so I did uh, all the drama day, um, any sort of reading I could. Uh, during middle school, I was in um, a drama club through my church youth group and we did a bunch of skits um and performances and things like that a lot of public speaking I did speech and debate in high school and um I did a year and a half of a BFA program in college so I acting was the track um but when I started um I've I've always been in love with animation um I get into some real talk, but I grew up, um, I have brothers and sisters, but we were all raised separately because of a number of family situations. So I was raised by my grandmother and I spent a lot of time in stories. Um, it was my social life. It was my, uh, how I spent my time. So I watched a ton of television and I read books voraciously. And so I just sort of lived in this fantasy world and I started very early being able to recognize that uh, some of the cartoon characters sounded the same. And then uh, when Toonami happened, it was uh, sort of late middle school for me. So you guys can all calculate my age. It's on my IMDb. Um, <laughs> but uh, I started realizing that, uh, you know, that Scott McNeil was 
duo Maxwell, that he was also uh, Ace the Bat Hound, that he was also Soldier Number Four. And I thought, oh my gosh, this is a job. People do this. And um, with voiceover, there's a freedom from typecast that you don't get in uh, film or theater. I had a lot of bad experiences um, early on, even in just like community theater with aesthetic based casting. And that's not to, um, to say that I was always the best pick uh, regardless, because that's not true. But um, like our theater head of the theater department in college was very vocal that the way that he cast was how he liked things to look. So uh, girls and guys had to be within a certain height disparity from one another. Uh, things like that. And it's exhausting. So um, when I moved into voiceover, there was just this freedom. Uh, I'm limited by vocal range and imagination, but very little else. And I have played such a dynamic, diverse group of characters that I might not have had the chance to do uh, in theater or film. Uh, so my very first job, goodness, I believe <laughs> I'm trying to backtrack on years. It's been a very long time. Um, I believe it was in 2009 was my first job, and it was a uh, PSA for a nonprofit organization for Rett Syndrome uh, called Girl Power to Cure. And that was my very first gig. My first anime role was in 2012. And that was for High School DxD. It was the first thing I got the chance to audition for. Um, I had been on Funimation's open call list for four years. And I got the call that they wanted me to come in to read for the open casting, which is just general, um, to see if you can read. But they're not casting anything in particular. But when I got that call, I was on my honeymoon. Uh, and I was devastated. I, I thought, you know, four years of waiting and it's gone. Um, but they put me back on the list. And the very next thing that they used that list for were the auditions for High School DxD. Um, and I, I got cast, uh, <laughs> which was not what I was expecting. Um, usually, it, it's, it's a little different now. But back in the day, the way that you... Um, would uh, typically kind of come up is that you would start on Bits and Walla and do that for a number of years until you develop relationships uh, and kind of move up. And so to come in and get the chance to voice a, a character, an actual character, and one that had this cool duality to her, um, I'm very, very thankful for that opportunity and many opportunities that followed. Um, and that's my entire story. <laughs> All right, we got, I got to sign. I got to sign at least one thing now. Uh, <laughs> this is for Sophie. Thank you so much, Sophie. Sophie would like decided by destiny. When you all get these, I promise you've seen me sign them. Each of these pins is changing my handwriting. I, I don't have phantom signers doing these for me. Thank you very, very much, Sophie. Whew, that was hard work. Does anybody have a question? <laughs> oh, uh, Star Blazers. Now I'm blinking. I see her. Harada. Harada. Yes. Gotta Google it now.
Makoto Harada. Yay! My memory did not fail me. I loved her. Um, goodness. Uh, she gets some deep character development in, uh, in the second season. All right, I have got a winter holographic for Flynn. Got to do the shinies every time. Oh, there's more Yamato? I feel so behind in all the, the ketchup. Thank you so much, Flynn. Season. <laughs> okay. I have another winter holographic for Abby. And Abby has said some very lovely compliments uh, on my work and uh, expressed a love of Emmy from Devil is a Part-Timer. Thank you so much for that. Uh, I appreciate you so much. I appreciate all of you for uh, sticking with us all these years and, and letting us be part of the things that you love and uh, giving us a chance to connect and interact like this. So, thank you very much, Abby. <laughs> ah, yes. Mona's accent. So, it's, um... A play on a mid-Atlantic affectation, sort of um, the 1950s studio speak. Uh, it's not an actual regional dialect, but it's, uh, I like to call it Brit-ish. Um, it sort of takes a uh, Midwestern newscaster, adds a little Brit to it, and it was uh, very popular in the Hollywood film studios of the 1950s to create sort of an elevated uh, dialect that couldn't be placed. And I love trying to sneak it into games and anime. <laughs> I'm, I'm thrilled to pieces anytime someone will let me do it. Oh, yes, the Star Wars anime uh, and a Lord of the Rings anime feature coming out. It's a good time to be a nerd. Uh, it's it's so cool uh, that the things that weren't cool when we were growing up are so popular now uh, and, and getting the sort of play that they are. Um, got... Castlevania, we've got new fan. It's just if you went back in time and told little me all these things would be things that I could talk to people about uh and wouldn't just be a niche interest. I do not think I would believe. Uh it's really really cool. Right, we've got a big Mona or for Trevor! Uh, ah, speaking of Castlevania, <laughs> we summoned you, Trevor. <laughs> Thank you so much, Trevor. I hope that you love her. Hey, 
Chase, welcome! Found me through Jen's stream. Aw, that's very, very sweet. Um, I, that's Jin Losi, who plays Ganyu, and I love her to absolute pieces. So welcome, and thank you, Jin. Oh, Vinti Holic, thank you so much. Hello. Is Jin sending all her people over here? It really genuine, genuinely touches me. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't leave. Don't leave because of the puns. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome, welcome, Snicky Fox. Aw, hello. If if you are all just coming over uh, from Jin's stream or just joining us, I'm Felicia Angel. I voice Mona in Genshin Impact uh, as the English voice option. I also am the English voice of Toru Hagakure from My Hero Academia. Uh, I have the Supreme Kai of Time in Dragon Ball Xenoverse. Uh, oh, uh, Ava in Borderlands 3, we just had the Mysterious Lair uh, content come out. Perona in One Piece and many several other things that I forget when I'm put on the spot. Uh, ah, who's, uh, Chase is mentioning having Ganyu and Monia, Monia, <laughs> Ganyu and Mona with friendship level to 10 with both. Um, I really do think that of the characters in the game, Mona would be best friends with Ganyu. I just think that they get each other. There's a practicality to Ganyu that I think Mona would really appreciate. And also, I love Jin Losi. Oh yes, uh, My Hero Season 5. We get uh, we get to see a lot of Toru in this one. Uh, she's had a lot of uh, cool, fun personality moments. And uh, I mentioned this a little bit yesterday, but uh, Colleen Clinkenbeard, who is our uh, lead ADR voice director for My Hero for all five seasons and two movies, um, she really gives me... Um, room to play with Hagakure and uh, with her characterizations and it's a it's a true joy uh, to be able to make her so enthusiastic and a little bit dorky like me um, <laughs> and a little bit sassy too so uh, thank you very much for watching <laughs> Supreme says no one coming from Jin's stream will be deterred by puns it's true. It's true. It uh I just find that it's it's very divisive these days and it's it's about 90% of my humor. <laughs> I'm going to sign a thing, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Yi, full of puns. Corey and uh, Christian, uh, too, we have bonded over on uh, uh, Chris Fiella's stream, who is our uh, the English language voice director for Genshin. Um, honestly, the biggest badge of honor is when you tell a joke and everyone in the room goes, ah. Yes, I'm powerful. <laughs> you only fuel me. Okay, we have a Mona for Jayla. Trying to, to like pause after these so people can find them. Jin has got a great system, a la Ganyu. She is on top of it. And I wish I had uh, seen her first. But here we are. Jayla, thank you so much. Uh, I hope that you love it when Mona comes home. <laughs> thank you, Jayla.
Oh, have I watched Invincible? I have. I've watched it twice now. I, I binged it um, alone and then I watched it again with my husband. Really interesting stuff. Um, it's cool to see where uh, there's so much that you can do in animation that you can't do in live action or it it animation can sort of elevate things uh outside of the confines of reality and so it's really cool to see shows like invincible take on uh what we've seen so much over the last few years the superhero stories uh and i i know it had uh source material before that but putting it into animation and really pushing uh the boundaries on what that looks like super fun to see Tony! We have the Mona drawn by Kristen McGuire, uh, who is Ruri in Dr. Stone and uh, Milim in That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. Uh, she also was the ADR voice director for Citrus and many, many other wonderful things. Uh, and she is a very talented artist who drew this uh, winterized Mona. Tony would like. It is as the stars foretold. There you are, Tony. Thank you so much. Um, if you are also just joining us, in addition to streaming, I'm doing kind of an ask me anything. So if there is anything that you want to talk about, we are all here for it. Uh, everybody in chat is so lovely and warm and supportive. Uh, and I'm thankful that you're all here with me. We have got a winter holographic for Lori. I always have to got to show the the sparkles. Oh, uh, Nick is saying that uh, Kristen McGuire and I sound alike, and I will take that as a compliment. It also is uh, why we're sisters in Doctor Stone. Um, Close enough to be related, but not identical enough to be mistaken for one another uh, in these particular characters. So Cliff did a killer job with finding the sweet spot on that. Lori would like, this is destiny. Thank you very much, Lori. <laughs> what is my favorite food? Um, that's it's a tough one. My instinct is pizza. There is no time I will not eat pizza. Um, but I love uh love 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 to cook i grew up in uh southwest louisiana food is community food is love um and that was a big way my dad and i bonded was cooking together so if i'm eating out um gosh i will i'll try anything i love um trying new foods trying uh 
interesting sort of uh, molecular gastronomy creations, uh, all the way to just comfort food. Uh, some of my favorite things to cook at home are uh, steak, rice, and gravy, which is a Cajun staple, uh, red beans and rice. I make a mean gumbo. Um, chicken and sausage, usually I don't uh, usually do a seafood gumbo for myself, but it's good on its own merits. It's just not what uh, I grew up. So, how long have I been streaming for? Today, about an hour and a half. <laughs> Yesterday, we did about uh, three hours. And in general, uh, I don't stream often. <laughs> um, I did a few uh, sort of just hang out together uh, streams on the channel alone together. Uh, at the start of the pandemic, um, it was something that Tia Ballard and I were doing together. And if we had a few uh, guests hop on. Alexis Tipton just hopped on and cooked dinner one night um, during sort of the early stuff to see uh, if we could kind of keep each other company uh, and keep things together. So I am uh, so thankful that you are all so sweet and so patient because I am not technically... Uh, advanced enough for all of this. <laughs> oh, after uh, finishing the signing, will there be more in the future where I'm just chatting or playing something? Maybe. Uh, this is honestly, it's been really fun. And um, I've hopped on a few other people's streams just to chat. Um, I'll occasionally pop into the chat rooms of uh, Rico Fajardo, who's a very good friend of mine. Uh, and I miss terribly since I, I moved out to California uh, late 2019. Uh, so I miss him a ton. And I'll usually just hop on and say hi. Um, I was in Chris Waycamp's stream yesterday um, doing uh, just live texting about the dungeon booth. Uh, sometimes I'll hop into Kyle Phillips' stream. But um, it, it's something that... I would love to do to connect with you all, but keeping to a schedule is a little hard. So um, I guess the, the short answer is we'll see. If that's something that you're all interested in, um, let me know. And maybe? Oh, thank you, Matt. Always welcome in Kyle's stream. I hope so, too. His his stream is so fun. Um, I'm really in awe of the communities that everyone has built here. Um, Kyle's, and it's also welcoming and warm. And um, I, I don't do a lot of online stuff. Um, I don't, like... I, I don't play multiplayer games online and things like that. Um, not that I have anything against it. It's just not something I've ever done. And so to just see what they've been able to build is so incredible. Jen Losey, too. She has got that community. You are all so lovely. Um, and so, yeah, if you, if you would have me, I'd be happy to be part of, of any and all of it. I could make an anime version of any TV show, huh? This is a random one that we've been talking about lately. There are two shows from my childhood that were um, in the era of the original Power Rangers. Um, one is Big Bad Beetleborgs, and the other is the Mystic Knights of Tirnanog. And I would love to see what we could do with those as, like, not necessarily a gritty reboot, but not not that. <gasps> Please have Kyle do a Dungeon Booth reunion panel. I would love that so much. Um, I'm really hoping now that we have the ability to, uh, to stream like this... Um, and everybody's become so technically proficient, and now that we are sort of cautiously dipping a toe back into 
live conventions that maybe we'll get to do another live game. Um, it it was so tremendous, and I I don't know if for uh, Chris is so good about continuity, about story, about the building of these worlds, and I don't want to dilute that by doing uh, too many things with the same character, but I would play Limerick every week if I could. I miss her. I love her so much, and I've become uh, so weirdly good at constructing Limericks, and I don't have any other use for that skill. I need to put it somewhere. Oh, Alexis. Uh -huh. <laughs> Alexis has the big Mona. Um, I don't know if you all can, can see. I mean, you can if I do that. This little hydro slime is my favorite thing in the world. I think we should name him. I'm open to suggestions. And Alexis would like my favorite Mona line. We all know it's the good old classic Delve into Destiny. Thank you so much, Alexis. These are these are harder to get the. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> I'm losing it a little bit, guys. Name the slime Rico. <laughs> Oh, uh, Vinti, the, uh, <laughs> when we were doing the sea shanties, um, it was, uh, back when the Wellerman took us all by storm, um, and some of the, uh, English Genshin voices were singing in character, and, um, rather than, uh, join them, I came on as Mona and asked, who's going to pay for the sugar, the tea, and the rum? Shant be I. It shanty be I. All right. Cesar has um, my holographic Hagakure sticker. Da, da, da. Oh, oh, can we? Can we... What, do we have the technology? Yeah, almost. We almost did it. So I also wanted a star. Mm, it's mirrored. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, name the Hydro Slime Aqua from Kingdom Hearts. I like that. Ooh, the the eighties D and D cartoon as a as a grittier anime. I dig it. I saw a costume for the Dungeon Master from that recently. Um, it like got memed. And I was like, is this a resurgence? Are they testing the waters? All right, just as a heads up, we've got about seven more prints. <laughs> I say about like I don't I didn't look exactly at it. We have exactly seven more prints. 
Um, and if you are interested in purchasing one to have signed, you can just follow the link streamily.com slash Felicia Angel. Um, I am going to chat with you guys uh, through the end of these signings and then probably skedaddle and uh, have a little bit of weekend left. But we are going to be leaving the store open um, and probably have one more stream in the next um yeah it all just sort of depends uh if it looks like everybody has had the chance to get theirs i might close up the shop uh in a couple of days but uh if it looks like uh there are people who are just uh joining just uh realizing that this is going on i want everybody to be able to have the chance to snag uh a print for themselves and get it signed live uh i know it's been difficult with us not doing any uh live events and so i want to do my best to keep this open and available for as many people as i can what do i like about mona and what was my impression when i first saw her um i love mona i like her confidence in her abilities uh, she knows what she is about. I like that she's not afraid to be a little silly. Uh, and I like her pride. I like the idea that she is not necessarily willing to admit that she's in need of Mora. Um, <laughs> she, uh, she's just fun. She's fun and capable. Uh, when I first saw her, I was obsessed with her hat. Um, I have a couple of little, uh, like, modern fashion uh, style witch hats, and I would love a big, giant Mona hat. Uh, I'm hoping that once conventions pick up that maybe people will be selling them. Uh, but I just thought she looked really cool and is a, just a cool character. In in terms of Mora, we have no. All right, I have a Mona for you, Lisa. Ooh. Thank you so much for your purchase, you Lisa. It's this one. It was this one. I'll go back over it. Sorry about that, you Lisa. Oh, dang it. A fresh one. All right, sorry about that. Thank you for your patience, you Lisa. I would love any official um, Genshin uh, merchandise. Got some stuff up here. It's a little difficult to see some uh, Got like a Shinoa pop, um, Sakura Suzuhara from Evangelion 3.0. I've got like a little uh, Imiusa charm there. Uh, I've got my my little shelf of my my characters. I had to at some point tell myself not to buy more Perona stuff because um, it, it's one of those things where 
not every character gets a ton of merch. So if you are at a convention or uh, out in a mall and you see something that's officially licensed, you sort of want to just grab it all up because you don't know if uh, you're ever going to see more. And with Perona, it turns out there's a lot. And I had to stop buying them because I was spending more than I was making as Perona on Perona. <laughs> it's an occupational hazard. Yes, with Genshin, if they had something for every character, you would go broke. Um, you're absolutely right. Oh, I wonder if I can find it. This is not going to be a flattering. Um, ah, I can't. I have a great, there was a whole series of cell phone charms for Perona of everybody um, doubled over in despair with the hollow ghosts running through them. And there was one of her that I have up here. Um, oh, character merch can be a tax write-off. Yes, it can. Um, <laughs> I try to still play it, play it cool, um, but especially if you're displaying it, um, if you are using it uh, in your stuff there, go talk to a tax professional. Don't listen to me for tax advice. That is my disclaimer. We have a lovely Mona for Jordan Sparks. Thank you very much, Jordan. Thank you so much. Mm. Sorry, I said, mm, like, you know what I'm reading. <laughs> this is for Matthew for your uh, promotional research. All right. For one, we have a Miku print from Quintessential Quintuplets. <laughs> Love this show. Thank you very much, Wong. Miku is best girl. <laughs> I love, I love the cast. I love the show. I love all the characters. But Miku, even if I didn't play her, she would be my favorite. Matt, thank you. Said uh, anytime Josh Greeley and I are together in a show, it's gonna be good. Um, He's tremendously talented. Um, there, there are a number of times that we've worked together. Um, I was intimidated working across him as uh, Mao in Devil is a Part-Timer because uh, I was still fairly new. I hadn't had a lot of roles that large to, to kind of carry um, the, the narrative with. And he just he lifts any project he's in um he was my lead in puzzle and dragon's cross um because i knew he would bring heart every week that he would never get tired of showing up and yelling cross on and finding the new monster that uh there would just be joy in it every single time which is my favorite thing to be <laughs> All right, we have got a Mona Magistus for Jordan. And Jordan has asked for me to surprise him with special instruction. Hmm. Do you have any ideas? Hey! <laughs> 
<laughs> Your fate is written in the starbursts. I love it. Take my time. Because I have this pain. I can make lots of little stars. So you got written in the stars with a zillion stars. That's the surprise. <laughs> Scaramouche's hat. I wish I could draw. I can't. I got really nervous because I know in the last signing, some people were getting really detailed with their drawings and uh, everybody was getting really excited about that. And I, I don't have it. I don't have those skills. I'm a performance artist, not a, a tactile artist. And I am in awe of those who are. <laughs> But I was so scared that everyone was going to be asking me to draw these really detailed things. And I'd just have to tell them no because I don't want to ruin your lovely prints. <laughs> With some of your uh, greatest D&D &D achievements. Um, there, there are several in the dungeon booth that I'm very proud of. Um, in my personal life. Um, we, uh, were starting an epic level campaign with, uh, characters that we had brought through, uh, like a two year long, uh, campaign previously. And then we did kind of a time skip and, um, did, uh, prestige classes, which was something that was in, uh, 3.5 that I don't think has carried over to 5th edition uh fifth edition dungeons and dragons um but i upgraded my sweet little bard lumina uh lumina solara and uh, i made her a sonomancer uh which is just prestige class bard she uh can speak and sing spells uh but one of the skills uh, the spells that she got was power word kill where you say kill and something dies. Um, and uh, our dungeon master teased us with the big bad in the very first game of the new campaign. Uh, we were on an airship because of course we were. And the big bad comes floating through the sky and gives this big speech about how he's going to do horrible things to innocent people. He's going to take away everything that we love and there's nothing that we can do about it. And Lumina is timid but good, uh, and she has this new spell. And so um, I checked in with the DM and said, this is how this character is feeling. I don't think it's a good idea as a player, but I feel like I have to play the character. And she wants to try to stop him here and now, even if she... Uh, if he retaliates and and I lose her and I had been playing her for years I was so nervous um but uh he failed the save and just dropped out of the sky dead as a doornail and uh my friend just left she just she just stood up and left uh <laughs> she was very mad <laughs> Because she had spent months working on this prestige class uh, epic level campaign. And uh, I killed the big bad game one. And I was like, you can take it back. We don't have to. And she's like, I can't. I can't. We'll always know that this is what happened. So she had to invent an entirely new conflict for that campaign. I'd say it feels bad, but it felt pretty good, honestly.
got Marion with the large size Mona. Thank you very much, Marion. These are so hard to pose with. All right, and Melissa. Got the Emmy use of print. Oh, favorite quote from Emmy. Oh, this is hard. Um, it's hard not only because there are so many, but also it was eight years ago. Uh, so let me just back out. Gosh, there are so many good ones. They bottleneck for me. Oh, is it Pikachu? Are you Melissa? Is this one you? If you have a favorite, because I'm going to sit here and think about every scene from the show <laughs> for the next 10 minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much for, for being here and for, and for getting a print. Oh, Marion! Yes, yes, yes! Hold on! Hold on! This one is you! Ha ha ha! Thank you so much! <laughs> Thank you for being here! <laughs> Man, you know what's hard about trying to think of my favorite uh, Emmy Yusa quote? Is that 90% of them are facial expressions. There was this, like, sneering, uh, that we did <laughs> in one. But I'm not going to write, uh, on your print. I may write, thank you for calling Doko Demo customer service. Um... That was one of the last jobs that uh, I had before I moved from uh, Louisiana was doing uh, customer service for um, an internet service provider. And I did tech support, which I know you guys have watched me struggle. Um. <laughs> Right. This is for Melissa. I've I've gone off the rails here. <laughs>
Sorry for going quiet on you guys. I'm still thinking. This, it's just a hard show. So we've got um, the uh, the uhs. And then uh, I don't want to write like perish Satan on somebody's print. But you watched the show. It's just always an awkward thing. Um, cannot wait to do Thank you so much, Melissa. All right, we are down to one. Ah, print. Aha. We have got Hagakure. Hagak. Hooray! Thanks for coming by, everybody. And this is for Cody! Alright, good. Start that one. Right. Thank you so much, Cody, who is one of our extremely family members. It's one of the only things I can draw. <laughs> it's mirrored. <laughs> that Tia Ballard taught me. So you get uh, a fun little glove and a peace sign. Thank you so much. All right. That is all that we have. Um, if anybody else has any burning questions, I'm happy to hang around for another minute, but if not, uh, I'm gonna go Sunday it up. Thank you, seriously, thank you all for being here all weekend matthew thank you for uh modding and for helping out i appreciate you so so much um all right i think i'm gonna scootaloo great thank you all so much uh i will see you next time